Hi, I'm Max Tiger, and I'm going to show you how to get started using the subliminal integration testing framework for iOS using CocoaBots. So today I'm going to be using a small sample application to demonstrate subliminal. It has a text field where you can enter a mathematical expression, and then you click solve, and you get a result. So to show you how to install subliminal with CocoaPods, I'll just work through its wiki and follow the instructions. So the first step is I need to add a target for my integration test, which is just like when you add a unit test, you have to have a separate bundle for you to put that code in. So go to the first step, which is to duplicate the existing target I'm using to build my app. So here I am in Xcode, and I'll go to my project. I'll choose my target, and then choose Duplicate. Here I want Duplicate only. Then I'm going to name it Integration Test. The next steps are just a little bit of cleanup. First, there will have been this copy info plist file created. You just want to select and send that to the trash. And then you'll use this choose info plist file button to choose the correct plist. Uh, you'll want the same one that your current app is using. Finally, you'll want to go to this manage schemes option here. Press enter to select this and then rename it integration tests. Final step is that we're going to create a folder for our integration tests. So back in Xcode, I'm going to right-click on my project, choose New Group, I'll name it Integration Test. Then, in the sidebar, I will choose this little folder icon to bring up Finder. I'll click New Folder and name it Integration Tests and then click Choose. So the next step will be to install Subliminal using CocoaPods. So if you haven't installed CocoaPods already, you just need to run sudo gem install CocoaPods to get it. Now, I have not used CocoaPods for this project yet, so I'm going to use the terminal to navigate to my project directory. Here I am. And now I'm going to make a new file called pod file with no extension. I'll open it up in a text editor. And then I'll just copy in what Subliminal has provided for us. Back here, I'm going to run pod install. But before doing so, since it's my first time adding CocoaPods, I'm going to close my Xcode project because we're going to be using an XC workspace file for now on. While CocoaPods is running, uh, as it does run, it's going to install all of the supporting files that Subliminal needs, including its uh, instruments, templates, continuous integration ships, uh, integration scripts, and other files like that. Excellent, so we can see that CocoaPods has correctly added Subliminal. I'll just make sure my project builds real quick. And it does. Okay, so the final step will be adding test running code to the app delegate. So I'm just going to copy paste this code into my app delegate file. This code is conditionalized by these integration testing macros, so it'll only run when we're running the integration tests. Okay, so the final step is that we're just going to check to make sure that Subliminal is working correctly. So Subliminal runs uh, by driving UI automation, which is Apple's JavaScript framework for doing integration tests. So I'm going to run Subliminal through instruments. I'll go to Product, Profile, 
or do command I. Making sure to build my integration test scheme. Now this will bring up a list of instruments templates that are provided. We want to go to the user section and choose subliminal. This will have been automatically installed by CocoaPods. This will launch instruments and all we're expecting is a message saying that there aren't any tests to run. That means that subliminal is working correctly and it's fine that there are no tests. We, ju we just haven't written any yet. So let's add some tests. Back in Xcode, I'm going to go to my project and choose the integration test group. Then I'll go to File, New, File. In the sidebar, I'll choose Subliminal, which will have been automatically added for you. And then I'll choose the integration test class template. I'll just call this example test. And I'll make sure that the integration test target is selected as well as the integration test folder. The SL test subclasses should be familiar to users of send test and XE tests. At the beginning of all the tests, the setup test method is called, then each test case is called, and then finally the teardown test case is called. The individual test cases are uh, found by them starting with the name test, taking no arguments, and returning void. Inside the test cases, you'll use subliminal to identify user interface elements, potentially interact with them, and then make some assertions about their behavior. The way that Subliminal identifies elements like KIF and UI automation is by their accessibility properties. If you go to the Simulator Settings app, and then go to General, Accessibility, Accessibility Inspector, You can enable a tool to see the accessibility elements of your app. Buttons and labels automatically inherit their accessibility label properties from their text. So you can use these properties like the string result to find the label. However, I prefer a more type safe approach. Inside my view controller, I have hooked up these properties from storyboards and have given them accessibility label and accessibility identifier properties, which I've uh, named as constant strings. I export these as extern in the viewcontroller.h file. Inside example test, I'll use those properties to identify the elements and interact with my app. The test I want to write will identify this text field up here enter the mathematical expression, press the solve button, and then verify that the result has the correct text. So to start, I will import my viewcontroller.h file, just so I can get those string constants, and then I'll add the individual parts of the test. The first step will find the correct text field using its accessibility label. So make sure that compiles. After it finds it using the accessibility label, it'll call the set text method on the text field to type out the string 2 plus 2. Next, we'll find the solve button using its accessibility label, and then we'll call tap on it. Finally, we'll look up the result label. Now, because the accessibility label is for what a disabled person would see, the accessibility label for this text field or for this label will continue to be the string four. But you can use the accessibility identifier property to specifically find an element just like an ID in an HTML page. So I'll find this SL element, the result label, I'll get the value of it simply using the value method of the element. And then I'll make a simple assertion that the value is equal to the correct result, the string four. So let's give that a test in instruments. Again, I'll go to product profile.
Great. The test passed and Subliminal affirmed that my app is working correctly. This video showed you how to install and write a simple test using Subliminal. If you're interested in learning more, head over to Subliminal's wiki page where we have links to API docs, a section on writing tests, including information with how to communicate directly with your app in Objective-C, a section on debugging tests, and a continuous integration, test, integration testing section with a working.travis.yaml file to get immediately set up with Travis CI.